Howdy once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube internet shop teacher, and welcome back to the channel. And this is part two of a video series that I'm doing on replacing and rebuilding blade guides for the Boyce Crane 14 inch metal cutting bandsaw. Go back and watch part one if you haven't already done so. So uh, let's get started. I'll summarize what I did yesterday and uh, show you where I'm going today. Before I get on with the uh, subject at hand, I thought I'd uh, take you to the back of the band. So I took the cover off, the door off for clarity, and you can see how well built this is, even though it's, uh, well, probably because it's 70 years old. I told you in the previous video that this machine is a combination of woodworking and metalworking. So I use it strictly and exclusively for metalworking, but this big heavy-duty gearbox here, and I've never had it open, is what allows me to change it between a fast speed and a low speed. Plus, there is a four-step pulley here. You can only see the back side of it, but there are four steps on this V-pulley. However, at the bottom, since I don't really need all those speeds, I just need a high and a low. I only have a one-step pulley on the motor. I don't think you can see that in the view. But, of course, this is all pretty much uh, something that isn't needed anymore because you can use a variable frequency drive. But right now it's in slow speeds. You can see that this lever here is in the slow mark. I put that in there in yellow, but it's also cast in here engaged. Let me turn it on. I've got it unplugged so it's safe to touch this. But let me turn it on and show you. Now this shaft here goes directly into that lower wheel of the bandsaw. And that is the low speed. Now to put it in fast or high speed, all one does is to take this plunger, and I've got it marked here many years ago, December of 93 is when I did this, in is for fast, out is for slow. Well, this plunger is out right now, so by pushing it in, you hear it click in, and now I'll move this lever down into the fast position, which is also marked disengaged, and now I'll turn it on. You'll see how much faster it's running. That is direct drive. It could be used for aluminum and certainly for wood. But often you need to change the blade anyway to a skip tooth blade. And I don't want to change both the blade and the speed back here because that still takes time. That's why I have the Delta woodworking saws. All right, now let's get back to talking about the guides. In review, what I'm doing here is I'm making the upper blade guide for this Boyce Crane 14 inch saw. This is the original. Now if you have not watched the first one, I'm just reviewing here a little bit and this is in bad shape. So I'm making a simplified one and in the last part, which was the first part, I made uh, prototypes out of maple or beechwood, whatever it is. Uh, so here's the first one, that's number one. And then I made some immediate changes and that's number two. And I'm satisfied with the design of this. Well, there's a few little modifications that I'll be making. So now I'm ready to make it out of metal. I was going to use steel. I do not have a block of steel sufficiently large. This is aluminum, albeit rather dirty. And you know, I've been saving this forever. And even yesterday when I found it in my stock rack. I thought, well, I don't want to use this. I'm saving this for an important project. Well, this is an important project. What am I saving it for? The Robert E. Lee? Okay, so this is what I'm going to use. The first thing I will do before I start the layout is I'm going to square the end because it's just as crooked as a dog's hind leg. So let me square that up on the milling machine and come back and determine how long I'm going to cut it. And I probably won't show every step in this because it's just too too tedious. I 
I marked it off in three and a quarter, at three and a quarter. Look at the nice finish. I squared up both ends using this Niagara Cutter solid carbide. Wow, look at that three quarter diameter. Beautiful finish. And square. I like the ends to be square because uh, I'll be putting this into the uh, milling machine vise over and over and I, I don't want to worry about uh, crooked ends on it. So what I'll do is saw it off. You saw me just lay out the line there. This is the good piece here. I got enough for another piece if I goof it up or possibly if I make the lower one. So let me cut that off which is going to be no small job here. I could go outside to the the big well saw, but it's very cold out. So after I cut that off, I will square it up also. What I'm doing is roughing this block of aluminum down to the overall dimensions of this piece. And I'm taking the measurements off of the rough cut wood and rounding them off just a little bit to some sensible numbers. But uh, I will saw it along that line that's waste stock. The skinny piece is waste stock. And on this side, the skinny piece is waste stock. Then after sawing, I will mill to the line and be back in 20 minutes. That took quite a bit of time to rough that out, but now the blank here is pretty much the overall dimensions of the wooden piece. And I've just laid out this uh, slot here. That'll be an eighth of an inch deep, so I'll go over to the milling machine and mill that out and that can go all the way through. That doesn't have to terminate the way I did there. So uh, I'll put a 3 8 yeah, 3 8 end mill in the bridge port and I'll see you over there. Here I go and that's a 3 8 end mill and I'm cutting 1 8 inch deep. With the work piece now in place, as you can see here, and it won't go in all the way until I cut the slot for the blade, so I'm going to take the flare pen and mark it on either side and then cut out the groove. You know, when's the last time you used a flare pen? I got a whole box of them, but they're so old <laughs> that the ink has dried up. Now looking at the piece with the flare pen I uh, formed a little railroad track and that's really and then I center punched between the track where all the toilet paper used to lay when we used to walk the tracks the old Rock Island line. <laughs> so taking a divider I want that slot to be 5 16 wide so I set the dividers for 5 30 seconds. I used to tell the kids you know how to find half of a, of a fraction and they say, no, I'd say uh, double the denominator. So half of 5 sixteenths is 5 30 seconds, but of course they didn't know what the denominator was. They thought it was an antique car. This is a 5 16 end mill. This is just a clearance slot and you can see the rough dimensions here so it's a rather deep slot and I won't take it all in one pass. Be sure and wear your safety glasses when working in the shop. And now that that slot is in there, I can fit it up and go around the other side and transfer that hole. And then I will also transfer this hole. I won't show that, but I will do that after the other one is drilled and tapped in place. That assures that they line up. And there's the transfer punch in the hole already.
Time for a story, and I've told this story in many videos. I'm telling it again because it's a good story, and there are always new viewers, so bear with me. Advance 30 seconds if you've heard it already, but my brother, who was a teacher in a junior college, had a set of these in the shop, and mind you, this was a night class, probably young adults, and a, a student came up to him and said, Mr. Peterson, you know, his name was Mr. Peterson, too. I did you a big favor. And he said, uh, well, what's that, Johnny? And he said, all of your Allen wrenches were rounded off here, ruined by somebody, so I took them over to the grinder and flattened them for you. The guide is now held in place by two Allen head cap screws, you can see. And I have taken the liberty here of marking with the flare, I, I know it's not very accurate, but where it needs to be cut out, pretty much just like the wooden sample. So let me take that off and do some sawing and then some milling. I did a little bit of scribing with a metal scribe, well, Randy Richards scribe, and uh, I marked, I scribbled here on the waist stock because you never want to cut on the wrong side of the line and forget which piece is waste and which is good. I, of course, have never done that. Now I'm on the Delta bandsaw. It says wood only, but I'm cutting metal. It is a skip tooth blade. We'll see if the blade will hold up. starting to shape up have a look at this these are the two holes that mount the guide onto the saw and this one is so crooked now that was done 70 years ago and I was wondering what what the interference I was blaming myself for tapping a crooked hole but you can see how this hole here and I've got a punch in there compare it to the hole here that is drilled correctly and with the blade itself and you can see how far out of whack that is. Wow! I guess what I need to do is get in here with my right angle drill and drill that hole a little bit oversized if I have a stubby drill where I can get in there to uh, it'll be sloppy but at least it, uh, it will tighten up without binding. This stubby drill bit is 1 32nd over a quarter inch and I'm using my little right angle drill but it says professional on there so I'm not sure I'm able to use this. Maybe I'm breaking the law. Looking at it from this direction now, this is the hole where this cap screw went through that was so terribly crooked and I did enlarge it and it seemed to go on okay now. So I solved that little problem, how that managed to get by. They must have tapped a crooked hole on the other piece so that it would coincide. All right, now I need to transfer again for this bearing. So I've laid a little shim in there because I don't want the bearing to rub against the bottom here. And using a transfer punch, I'm going to lay it in there just like that, 
and with my brass hammer, have you noticed I almost always use a brass hammer with punches? For two reasons. It doesn't bugger up the end so bad and it doesn't slip off and make the punch go flying and that I've had that punch since I was a boy. I stamped it with my name when I was in high school. Alright, so I'll punch that. But let me explain something about these bearings again. Alrighty, I have drilled the hole for the pin. Notice I drilled it all the way through because I don't like a blind hole in case I would need to get that pin out then I would have to drive it out. There'll be a set screw hole drilled right there to hold that little pin in place. Also notice there is a flat milled on the, the, uh, the pin because if you don't have a flat on there sometimes you you get a mark and it buggers it up and then you can't slide it out so I, you know I'm a man that wears suspenders and a belt so I've got the flat here and a way to drive it out so you know I've just dealt with all this stuff in my life so so many times and the other thing is I need to put a washer on the back side of this now I'm going to use a thinner shim type washer and it'll go in like that but let me point out something now first of all I'm used to do-all band saws. That's what I had at the high school, and they were just wonderful saws invented by the Wilkie brothers. But they used a smaller bearing than this, but the bearing had a little shield or a cap over it. So that protected the bearing. Also, when it wore out, you could buy new ones for a dime or something like that back then and, uh, and uh, save the bearing. But anyway, the position of the blade when it contacts with the bearing is such that it needs to be way out near the rim like that not farther inboard if it's inboard uh, two things are happening one the bearing is spinning and touching the blade at the top but the blade is also touching at the bottom which tends to want to slow the bearing down so if you get it out on the edge uh, that's where it belongs and uh, I think I've got it located pretty well in regards to the center of this slot. The bearing is in place. I drilled and tapped that 832 set screw hole so I can uh, lock the shaft. Notice that a feeler gauge fits underneath and it spins freely. Now should I change blade sizes and need to move this in and out, I can, but I may have to, if, when I put a 3 8 blade in, if I ever do, mill a little bit off of the back of the, the aluminum here. I'm not really sure because most of the time I use the same size blade. The blade needs to be supported from the side so it can't do this. It's already supported from the back and that requires these two pins here, whatever you want to call these. I guess I'll just call them guides. Now sometimes we use hardened ones and remember sometimes they're at an angle so the table can be tilted but I'm not going to do that. So I was decisive a while ago. I couldn't decide, remember, between a 5 16 and a 3 8 Well, I finally hunkered down here and decided it's going to be a 3 8 so I will lay out with uh, a marker, let's see, right here above and below and also how far back I want them to go and then I'll go over to the mill and mill those out three eighths then there'll be of course two set screws that will come in from the top. Now if I use hardened guides the set screws aren't going to grip into them so for now at least I'm going to stick this off. This is just key stock, it's super cheap if they do wear, I can grind the ends, but I've, I've never really had that problem, so that's the route I'm going. In review, I want it to look like this on the prototype, and I have laid out. And this is the waste stock here in the middle with a scribble on it. I also laid it out on this side, and this is the side I'll be milling from, of course. That's the waste stock. Notice that I made it a little off-center so that got quite a reflection there. This is thicker than the bottom side here because that gives me a little bit more uh, a longer thread for the set screw is the reason for that. There we go.
perfect fit. You know what, ever since I started this project I've been doing the layout and most of the work right here on the bandsaw table. Now this is 8 inches higher than my regular maple bench. And I recall out in Cody my brother does all his work on his do-all bandsaw, which is a little bit larger than this, albeit small work he does. Also my neighbor a gunsmith who has a chronic bad back has a bench built especially high. But this is just very comfortable working height and I really ought to make a new workbench this height. But why did it take me 75 years to figure that out? Well, let me lay this out for the set screws. I'll be back in a few minutes after I drill and tap. Well, it certainly is a smaller and simpler design than the original, is it not? Now, it's about done, and I'm sure that some of you are going to say, again, why did you make it out of aluminum? Because it just doesn't have the strength. And I really think that the only place where it could fail is over-tightening these screws could possibly spread this. But as I said to you earlier, I had no way of broaching a square hole like they did here. And a little cap over there would, be, again, be just so difficult to make. So we're going to see how this works. And these aren't tightened up yet, but uh, they need to be tightened up when this is mounted and in place. So I have a brand new bandsaw blade on the boys crane. Let me go ahead and put this on and uh, let's see how it fits up and maybe how it cuts. The guide is mounted and it looks pretty good. Now this is all excess material and that could be taken care of in different ways. I'm not going to do anything but that could be cut off that is streamlined like this or or something like this. You know and call that waste stock. I'm not going to do that but that's just a matter of uh, aesthetics really. But it looks pretty good. It's uh, I got three eighths guides in there and it seems quite firm. The blade is right up against the bearing. The machine is set at slow speed right now. Now I've said this before and this is high speed steel lay the tool bit. We could make, I could make the guide out of that but this is really a bugger to cut and the set screw wouldn't bite into it so I'm not going to do that at least not for now. Furthermore if I use a narrower blade and the only narrower blade I ever would use would be a 3 8 as opposed to this and you know that causes the blade to track a little bit different on the wheel and in other words reposition itself. So the bearing would have to be moved and a new guide could be made and I've seen many guides made like this where they are, the, let's say, the 3 8 size and then reduced in thickness here to accommodate whatever blade size you're using. So that's a possibility if I ever do change blades. This is 3 16 aluminum and of course it's the wrong blade for that purpose and it's at, at the wrong speed but this is the inaugural run. <laughs> And that's fine, but it would cut three times or four times that fast with a skip tooth blade at high speed. But I can do that on my other band saws. This machine really is dedicated to the one I love. No, we're dedicated to cutting steel. Mind you that the lower blade guide is not in good condition. We're going to take that off and examine it in a minute. I'm really just test driving the, uh, the upper bearing guide here. And this is what? 3 8 cold roll steel. And that cuts fine. That's a brand new Sterrett blade uh, 
14 tooth from KBC Tool. You know that really a bandsaw blade is supposed to be broken in. Uh, I didn't. I just plunged right in and started cutting with it. And it, and it cuts fine. Uh, and I knew it would. Remember that these saws, these vertical metal saws, uh, are were called contour saws, and I believe that Dewall is the one that used that term. Uh, so they're meant also for cutting curves and circles and all of that, but 98% of what I do is straight cuts. You need a narrower blade for the contour cutting, and I just dread changing blades because you have to change the speeds and the guides and all that, so it's just a chore, so I pretty much make do with the blade that I have in there. Alright, now, as I'm concluding the video, we're going to examine the lower guide. I have no intentions of making it at this time, and that's certainly not part of this video. Do you recall from earlier in the video where I talked about the fact that uh, this guide here is at 45 degrees and the purpose of that was when we tilt the table it would allow the guide to come very close to the work. Now I still would be able to to cut at an angle. I really never have. But this this guide would still get fairly close to the table but certainly not that that close down here, but I don't see that as a problem at all. So this is how the table comes off. These two locks are removed and laid off to the side, and I believe, if I remember correctly, I just lift it, and boy is that heavy, because it's cast iron, and comes off like No, in order to get it off, I will have to remove this trunnion that I'm tapping with my finger. Okay. It took uh, two cap screws loose. And this is interesting. This is the only place on the entire saw where it says Boyce Crane, because any other graphics were painted over by the time Ford came out with an overhead valve V8. And this is die cast zinc. Quite heavy and obviously plenty sturdy. Well, now the table, and should I say here before I put this away, the table would tilt to 45 degrees in one direction and it looks like about 10 degrees in the other direction. Now, will this heavy table come off? Yes. And isn't this interesting? at least it is to me, to hold this piece on and to lock it in place. Here's a bolt. Well, immediately I noticed, well, that's a plated bolt. It looks relatively modern. Well, that's a piece that I made. You know, you can recognize your own work. So this is something I made, and there's two of them, when I rebuilt this machine. And, you know, I would have gone to tremendous effort to do this, and isn't it amazing that I don't even recollect doing it? But that is the lock. And there's a radius on there. And there's the lower guide, similarly built, but uh, mounted a different way. Let me take the vacuum cleaner and clean this up real well. That hasn't been cleaned in a long, long time. And uh, we'll take a look at it, but I think this is okay. This guide is functional, but it's really not very good. You can see that it's been welded here. Well, you can't weld pot metal, can you? Well, somebody did, or and then it's been painted over, so I don't know. Well, I, my heart still isn't in it right now to make a lower guide because I'm worn out. But take a look at how this works. You see it's in, in two pieces. This part that holds the guides moves back and forth, up and down here. I should now back and forth. And it needs to be in a position so that it doesn't uh, strike the set on the blade. And this, notice this end of that guide, it is stepped down like I showed you a few minutes ago. In fact, that's probably where I got the idea. It's just that I haven't looked at this in 15 years. And I would have replaced this bearing at that time. And then the other part of it here, this part moves back and forth and then you can tighten it here. With this knurled knob, and that brings the ball bearing up against the back of the blade. 
and then is similarly locked. But these had vibrated loose, so I'm going to tighten them before I put this back together with the pliers. And this bearing is okay. Remember that a bandsaw like this, even though it's in my basement, I don't use it every day. So it probably has maybe a hundred hours on it, certainly probably less than that, even in all of those years. So that bearing is fine. I would not hesitate to change it if it needed it. And again, it moves up on the back of the blade and then it's tightened down. Well, that's really all I'm going to say about this. And these two set screws here can be loosened. And what I will do before I put the table back on is, is bring these up against the blade. But, you know, they're pretty, you know, they're really where they should be right now. So I don't have an issue with this lower guide other than that that weld really bothers me, but I will quickly forget about it so it doesn't matter, I guess. All right, I'm going to put the table back on. Well, from a 75-year-old blade guide to a prototype 1, prototype 2, and then a finished upper blade guide for the Boyce Crane 14-inch metal cutting saw, that concludes this video, shot over about a five-day period, two parts, the second part terribly long, but it's all informational for your entertainment and viewing pleasure. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video.